Central on ABC. We're back with Trump campaign senior advisor Boris Epstein Thank you, that's and so nice. Democratic strategist Liz Smythe. <laughs> Sorry, Smith. Um, and joining us from Washington, D.C., former RNC online communications director Liz Mayer. Liz, you are vociferously and sometimes saltily anti-Trump. Um, but I want you to try. And anti-Clinton, to and, be fair. And, I, 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 hate, I hate everybody this cycle. Yeah, you're, you've come out, you're in favor of Gary <laughs> Johnson, right? So just, yes, just talk correct. last night from the standpoint of, of someone who doesn't like either one of the, uh, the tops of the tickets. How do you think the vice presidential debate played out? Uh, I think given that it was a debate that seemed to focus very heavily on the negatives of both Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, I felt like a, a great deal of what was said in it was actually tremendously accurate. I think, unfortunately, like most Americans, I came away from it feeling extraordinarily demoralized about the terrible choices that the two major parties have put forward this cycle. Um, and, you know, really hoping that a lot of other people who are watching that will hopefully investigate their other options, consider writing themselves in or writing in somebody else that they like or skipping out voting on the presidential altogether and just going and focusing on down ballot um, but you know I thought that it was an interesting debate I mean for for once this cycle we actually saw a debate where people sort of acted the way you expect them to act in debates uh, which was sort of gratifying and relieving and refreshing in a particular way I didn't expect Tim Kaine to act like that in a debate coming in Maybe a little too much Red Bull, who knows? But that was, I was really surprised. I did expect sort of a, a measured debate with some fireworks, but I was shocked by the way that Tim King carried himself. Well, I think, Boris, if you, I will let oh, you talk, so I'll talk now. So it was, it was completely. Uh, Boris, you are, you're the king of interrupting really have, everybody. I mean, no, you should take no tips from Kellyanne Conway so, about not you know? interrupting all the women all the time. You are a bit like Tim Kane here. There's a lot of people I was actually the one, I was the one talking. Here's what I was going to say before, before Liz decided to jump back in. You know, on style, I think you're, you're, you're totally right. Governor Pence showed to be measured, showed himself to be somebody who's ready to step into the office of the vice president. But Tim Kaine came with those canned lines. He didn't have much beyond it. And then he didn't seem to enjoy himself. Yeah. Let me, that's what I thought I was wanna switch to, I want to switch to Sunday that's, night. I don't totally disagree with that. Switch to Sunday yeah. night and Thank start, you, Liz. Start, start with Liz Smith here and then the other Liz. <laughs> it seems to me Donald Trump needs not only a, a good debate performance, but a big audience. Do you get the mm -hmm. sense? What's your sense of the trajectory the country's on Sunday night? Will the ratings be anything like they were for the first debate for the rematch or not? I don't think so. No. Okay, <laughs> drop off. I do think there by will what, be a drop what? off. How many people do you think will watch? Uh, let's 80, see. Watch, 80, 80 plus 80, watch the first one. Uh, look, look I'm not an expert in these things. I would say 70, 65. 70, 65. Uh, Liz, what do you think? Uh, Is the country I have no engaged particular in the rematch? Views with re I have no particular views with regard to ratings or rematch. I just suspect that yet again we're going to see a debate between two people who have historically high unapproval ratings and that people are not going to be very enthused about voting for. But they do but, know where Aleppo know, is. Which is interesting, unlike Gary Johnson. Yeah, so, actually, Boris, well, and, and unlike, and, and actually, I think, in. unlike Donald Trump does, but I think it's right. interesting to note that Mike Pence clearly does. And last night, he outlined a totally different policy with regard to Absolutely Syria to what Donald Trump exactly has, which is, which is totally excellent. Now, which, Boris, wait, Boris, Boris, Liz, Boris, Liz, Boris, can you, Liz, Boris, can you avoid interrupting people for like half a Liz, second? Because Liz, every me, time I see you on TV, this is Liz, all you let, do. Let me ask you, let me ask you, though, about your new candidate, Gary Johnson. In an interview with Andrew Mitchell yesterday, he basically proudly said, I don't know any world leaders because they're all horrible career politicians. I, that's why I don't like any of them or know any of them. Is that a position you're comfortable with for the next president of the United States? It's not the optimal position, I will grant you that. <laughs> uh, but compared to Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump on foreign policy, I'll take it. Okay. At least uh, this isn't a guy who was totally naive enough to buy into the idea of a reset, reset with Russia and Vladimir Putin, and who now, for Trump's part, is buying into the idea that he can somehow do the same thing that Hillary Clinton tried and failed at a couple years ago. I mean, so. he at least at least Gary Johnson is somebody who I think understands that Russia is instinctively disinclined to be our friend, no matter how much we kiss their butts, which is something that Donald Trump keeps trying to do and keeps thinking that he's going to make pals with Vladimir Putin if he keeps doing not. it. You're, you're and something more that, wrong, Liz. Well, that's it's actually completely okay. yeah. inaccurate, Boris. Boris I, Boris, I know that you spend a lot of time on TV, so it's hard to keep up on the news and what your candidate actually says, but okay. the reality is that your candidate spends more time kissing Vladimir Putin's butt than just about anything you else just these days. The word butt, which is just, Maybe that's not why you're on a campaign this cycle. Moving on. Um, 
That's an interesting characterization. All right, uh, no, I've course. been on campaigns this cycle. In fact, I ran the super PAC that did the most damage to your candidate, which is and, why and you're and pissed off at me. And 14 million people voted for us in the primaries, and Forrest, our candidate let, is... Let me just ask you this question, just on, okay. on, on this question, on just to, on, a, on a factual matter, sure. right? I, I, over the course of the last 24 hours, I've read countless conservatives, countless foreign policy conservatives who've gone and basically agreed with the Clinton campaign and made long lists of places where Mike Pence's foreign policy is at odds with Donald Trump's foreign policy. Mm -hmm. It's not a Democratic talking point. It's not a liberal talking point. You hear it from no, you hear it from neocons. You hear it from other people. So are you actually trying to make the claim that Donald Trump and, and Mike Pence are in sync in terms of foreign policy on Russia, Syria, all the places where let's, they, were in, they laid out totally different visions? Let's talk about each one. On Russia. Start with Syria. Start with Syria, sure. On Syria, Donald Trump and Mike Pence have been very specific that we need safe zones in Syria for the refugees to be in Syria. Now, as far as dealing with the crisis of Syria, both Donald Trump and Mike Pence have been specific and in sync that we need to work with our allies and we need to leave all course, options on the table, but course, we don't want boots course, on the ground. Course. Donald yeah. Trump, Donald Trump, quote, let Syria and ISIS fight. Why do we care? Let ISIS and Syria fight and let Russia, they're in Syria What's already, let them fight ISIS. What's that quote? When, when's that quote from? Uh, I don't have a date on the right, quote, that but that is, that is a quote. He says things like that. He says things like that. Wait, wait, hold on, Liz, hold on, Liz, hold on, Liz, hold on, Liz. Are you saying it's just not operative anymore? That You're not quote, denying that he said those that, things. That quote is from, taken out of context probably a year and a half ago. <laughs> the foreign policy of this campaign has been very consistent, and it's what I just laid out. Now, on Russia, let's be honest with you. On Russia, both Donald Trump, Donald Trump and Mike Pence. You got to stop because we're running short. Sending Liz, and then we're done. Okay, well, talking about ISIS, like, again, on ISIS, what, in one of the debates, his policy that he laid out was that he was going to bomb the out of ISIS, and that was his big plan to deal with it. So now it's How great. did Hillary do with ISIS? How, she, she How did she do with ISIS? Uh, she is 80 dealing with ISIS. 80% of people killed by ISIS right. have been killed in the last three years. We got to go. We got to go. Hillary Clinton go, for ISIS. go yes. on for a long time, but we got to go. But I like having the three musketeers here. So like. <laughs> Which one am I? <laughs> and there's just so much love in this room. Yeah. Everybody like is just loving each other so much. It's a big, huge love fest. Boris Epstein. Well, I'm, in, I'm in D.C., so I don't need to be part of the, you're the love fest. You're I, I don't do the loving. I do the hating. Oh, well, okay. Well, that's a perfect self-characterization. At least you said it, not us. Boris Epstein, Liz Merritt, it was great to have you. Liz Smith, great to have you, too. Thank you all. Republican strategist Mike Murphy joining us after this. And if you're watching us, if you're watching us in Washington, D.C. and seeing this incredible fireworks, you can also listen to it on the radio radio at Bloomberg 99.1 FM. We'll be right back.